Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, Director of Global Business Development for Referizer, joined today by President and Founder of Outlaw Fit Camp, Jesse James Leva. Jesse, welcome to Local Business Hacks. Carl, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Of course. So I know a little bit about your story, but talk to us about the journey that got you to this point in your career. Yeah, yeah. It's a fun, crazy journey. I only got a couple minutes to tell you about it, but I'm somebody in a position that I had you asked me this in my teen years and even my 20s, I never would have imagined that I'd be where I'm at now based upon the path that was laid for me. Um, High school dropout, messed up a whole bunch, got in a lot of trouble when I was younger. Loved working out, was in fitness since I was in my early 20s, probably 19, 20 years old. And fell in love and had a passion for fitness enough so much that I built it into a personal training business. And while doing that, I had and opened two gyms, one about 6,000 square feet and one about 40,000 square feet. And both of them broke me. (laughs) The last one was the largest one. And that left me homeless, going through a divorce at that time and lived in my car and had to make that choice. Do I get a job back in finance, which I kind of did for a while on and off? Or do I try again? And I made that choice to borrow from friends and family. And I tried again, open up a studio. And within six, almost yeah, six years, we were doing $1.1 million in revenue, recurring revenue, just personal training. So again, I look back and I'm like, dude, there's no way I would have believed that story. And I'm so thankful I stuck with it. And I repaid those two people back. <laughs> but I'm so th- happy that I borrowed that $6,000 from two people. So That's amazing. And fast forward today, talk to us about Outlaw Fit Camp. How can people get involved? Where are you? Yeah, we now are a franchise company. And that's the beauty of this. We built something that we could duplicate now. And I loved it so much. And I initially had four locations until I researched and learned more about franchising. And I love the idea that I can empower and help people kind of do and do what I was doing, but have a blueprint so they didn't have to do the other things that I did to get to where I was, which is go broke and lose my butt. So, you know, we have seven locations. We're based out of Flower Mound, Texas, which is about 10 minutes north of DFW Airport or 25 minutes north of Dallas. And we built this about a year and a half ago, and it's a stunning location built for franchise development. Awesome. And for those that want to get involved, OFCfranchise.com? Yep. Or OutlawFitCamp.com. Either one of those will work. Awesome. Jesse, thank you for sharing. I would love to know from your own personal belief, what makes Outlaw Fit Camp different from the rest of the boutique fitness studios out there? Oh my God, where do I start? But I'll keep it simple. <laughs> um, not sure if you see my logo in the background. I think it's right there, that little guy right there at that little round circle around him. Um, I would say faith. Faith is the biggest thing that differentiates Outlaw from everything else. Faith is what got me through to trying again. <laughs> When I could have thrown the towel, I just had faith and I had my outlaw family. It wasn't outlaw at that time. It was my people that were there for me, my workout family, my initial family also. So faith, family, fitness, those are what make up outlaw. And our circle around the outlaw guy, his face mask is an F and a C, if you can see that. And then there's a circle that stands for outlaw, but it's a circle made up of three slashes. The top one is faith. The left side is family. The right side is fitness. Those three things pushed me and helped me get to where I'm at. And what we did is we carefully and respectfully hid that in our logo because I'm very respectful of people. Everybody has a different faith, whether you believe in yourself, the wall, God, Allah, it doesn't matter. I love you, but everybody has some kind of faith. And that's what our business is built off of, man. And if I wouldn't have that, I wouldn't have been, I I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have built this, this brand. And that's kind of deep, but one of those hidden messages. Yeah. My takeaway, I think. In confidence, you're our first guest on the podcast over a hundred episodes in to talk about love and and their passion and 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 doing everything out of love. So outlaw fit camp people, it's awesome. Congrats, Jesse. It's uh Thank you. it took me 28 years to do everything of mine with love. So 
Congrats on you. Yeah, that's um, what I wake up and do, man. So thank you, man. <laughs> of course. Going right into it. All right, people. If you're not excited to hear Jesse's hacks, I am. Jesse, talk to us about your local business hacks and the stories that really molded them. Man, you know, I, I always say a company handbook starts off 10 pages, then after five years, it's maybe 40 pages. And after 20 years, hundreds of pages. And it's based off employees. It's based off of mistakes you've made. Our employee handbook is about... 180 pages long. <laughs> and what I think, I guess I, I listed out some of my important hacks that I think are important. And we use a team to hire our people. And I think your culture is the number one thing you have in your business once it's more than one person being yourself. So you want to protect that culture. And culture is one of those words that's easily abused. And people think going out and having beers, going out and throwing axes is culture. No, culture is trusting that everybody on your team is doing the job that they're hired to do and you're not having to clean it after somebody's mess or babysit a grown adult doing their job. So protecting that culture is important and paramount. So we do a multi-step slash multi-person interview process towards not just myself or our operations director, our hiring manager making the final decision because if we're shorthanded and we need somebody, we might be hiring out of desperation. If we just got rid of somebody and we don't like the way they looked or the way they spoke, we might make a bad decision. So we make sure to go through a protective process. And I have a couple of different people that make final decisions. And I'm still heavily involved in the franchise company and our primary location, which is an operating location. But I don't make that final decision. I want people that are on the grounds working with these people making that decision. So that was one of the number one hacks I think a business owner should do is don't just have your eyes on that employee bring in somebody else that's going to be working with them and give them that respect because it goes a long way with your team. If you bring them into that hiring process, they will now help protect your culture better than you just making a decision for them. So that would be one. Awesome. You want the next one? Please. <laughs> Cut out cancers quick. I think anybody that's been in business longer than five to 10 years, I'm sitting on 17 years now with my primary location, my LLC, and that I have now. And then the franchise companies since 2019. So I've learned, man, I think mistakes I made 10 years ago was I would keep people way too long talking to them, thinking that they would change, hoping and wanting them to change, wanting the best for them. And all they would do is breathe cancerous hate or negative vibes and energy. And if you don't fix that and you don't see those true colors of people quickly, it culminates into a multiple people like that drinking their Kool-Aid when it should be the brand, it should be your Kool-Aid. And if they don't I think you have to be bold enough as an owner and a visionary that if people don't want to drink that Kool-Aid, they don't believe what you do, get rid of them and find people that do. So we do that now. And by interviewing people and having other people in part with that interview process, they now all protect the brand. And that was what was really the hardest thing for me to learn that people don't always change. Sometimes that's just who they are and you need to help them be who they are somewhere else. <laughs> so. I, uh, I'm sitting here in awe just because that was a lesson that I wish I heard nine years ago. I had 500 employees of my own in Boca Raton and I had one bug yes. and I let somebody in thinking that they were going to change. And seven months later, I had to clean the entire house and yeah, dude. everyone and start from scratch with 18 people and get back up to 400. Oh my God. It was bad. And I think not only preventing that from happening, but when it does, the cliche of slow to hire, quick to fire is incredibly valuable when we're building scaling companies. And nobody that's listening to this podcast is not interested in growth. Yeah. Yeah. And those people that you bring with you, they're the people that catapult you to your success and growth. Yes, you make the decisions and you lead from the top on down, but you're right. If you don't get rid of some of those key people that are building that negative culture, it hinders and slows down your culture. It, sometimes it even shuts down your business. So you're right. I mean, you got to clean house quick and have people that, again, share in the love of your company, your brand and your vision, what your company's going to do. So same thing in friends. Yes. Same thing in life. Unfortunately, sometimes same thing in family, but you know, it's, you got to, energy is everything and we create abundance from that. So it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Jesse, thank you for sharing. Do you have one more for us? I got a couple more and I'll knock them out pretty quick. Yes, please. But 
vision build with your team, man. We are still small enough where I can still meet with our team one-on-one. So I like to vision build with them individually. We also do team meetings once a month on leadership development. And there's been a few months where I dropped the ball and missed those meetings. And when we miss them, I notice a difference in just the energy, even though we kick ass all the time. But what we do is we go over goal setting, vision building, and it's not just personal, but business growth whether it's helping an employee clean their credit up, get a car, take a vacation they ever had. We helped a young girl get into an apartment. We lay things out to where you actually care about them. And I've, I've learned that when they're successful and they're happy and they know that you give a shit, then they're going to go uh, above and beyond the moon to help you. So it's just a win-win. And I don't think enough people do that with their team and they hire them and they forget about those people. And I've been guilty of it. And it tears my heart up knowing that I did it for a while and I dropped the ball for a few months. So That's one big thing I think is a massive monumental thing in a business you can do and then never turn a deaf ear. I'm always staying involved and my wife and I, Tiffany, always looking for suggestions from our franchisees, our employees on how we can make things better. And that makes a big difference, especially when you mention that in our team meetings on Zoom with our leadership, we mention and we call out that franchisee that gave us that great idea. And I think that helps everybody go, wow, these guys are growing. I want to be a part of this. I want to have some input. And then the last thing, and this was monumental through COVID and our shutdown, never rest on your short-term success, always be innovating. We had an incredible concept. We were already franchising and the jail cells you see behind me, those are called jail cells. That was developed after COVID. And I didn't want to open up the same way that we were doing things before, which is how every group fitness thing runs. They all go in a circular pattern and I follow you and now... I might have sweat everywhere. Now that poor girl after me has to touch my handles and all the stuff that I have and it's sweat and it's nasty. No, you're in your jail cell for 14 to 15 minutes. And once you're done with those four movements, you wipe it down, sanitizer wipes, you switch sides, three, two, one, you know, after the movements are demonstrated, you go through that class, you're getting eight movements in a half hour. And that was the most innovative thing that was missing in group fitness. Everybody did the same thing and we did not want to come back doing the same crap. So it's a harder workout. It's easier on my team to set up. And it was just a game changer. And now you have your own jail cell that you're in because it's outlaw. So you're in a jail cell. And that so that was one of those things. Always be innovating. It's really easy to put your feet up and get comfortable. But I've been there before. When I did, somebody knocked that chair out from under my ass and I went broke and I lost everything. So I always wake up fearful that I'm going to be broke again. And that's just something if I can leave anybody with. Always wake up in the fear of being broke or lost and losing your business, it'll make you react and take different avenues and make different decisions to better your company. That's awesome. Jesse, I want to shed light on something that you briefly touched on, and that's your wife being involved in the organization. And correct me if I'm wrong, she's your CEO. Absolutely. Tiffany is a game changer. When we did this, we had a crazy idea. I came back from a business seminar out in San Diego, and I developed Outlaw on a napkin in the airport on a layover, leaving a mastermind meeting. And I came home obsessed with this idea of putting group fitness and personal training because we were already a million dollar studio four years now in personal training and EFTs, forward thinking processes, procedures, but group fitness was missing the mixture of doing both where I can now help people that aren't just 40 and up. I can help an eight year old. I can help an 85 year old knee replacement, high blood pressure, diabetic. We can help you. So that's what we did. They both had a baby and outlaw was born and we did really, really well. We started the first idea of Outlaw, the concept, 2014, playing with the idea of a model. And a couple of years before we franchised, I think right around 17, Tiffany got involved. And dude, talk about our branding, our website, our social media presence, the operations manual, the just everything being hyper-organized went from a zero to 120%. And by 2019, we were franchising so I've learned to bring on smart women. My wife is a CEO. We have a single mom, Deidre, that's been with me, I want to say five, six years, that is our operations director. I have a 65-year-old gentleman that's been with me seven years. He's our tra- our head trainer. And then, hey, Sims, who's been with me, I think 17 years, was with, I just hired her out of Baylor. And then six months later, I shut down my gym. She's been with me ever since. And now she's my, her and her husband are my business partners. So it's just bringing people along with you for the ride, people that help push you up versus people that pull you down. And that's now what I surround myself with. That's amazing. I want to shed light a little bit deeper yeah. on the relationship of setting boundaries and working with your wife on a day-to-day. 
Yeah, that's huge and very important. I respect the hell out of her and she respects the hell out of me. I stay in my lane. If, you, if you're a franchisee or an employee asking me about social media, the software, hey, talk to Tiffany, talk to Deidre. You want time off, talk to Richard. That's not my game. You want strategy KPIs? I'm the guy. You want to talk performance? I'm the guy. But I, I stay in my lane. She does the same. We both every now and then tiptoe into each other's lanes and we get shocked. <laughs> You know, she'll she'll cattle prod me, and I'm like, oh shit, sorry, I messed up. I shouldn't have shouldn't have said that. Okay, I, I effed up there. But I think you really need to respect each other, and we work really well together. We can't wait to be around each other. We enjoy our weekends together. We go to disturb concerts and rock, and we just we love from country to rock to rap. We listen to the same things, and we enjoy our pool and our dogs. And I think it's important to have that bit of balance. But I think the most important, if you're a husband and wife team, you got to respect each other and know who has the strong points and stay in those lanes. That's amazing. Jesse, congrats to you and, and Tiffany and the whole outlaw team on getting here. And we're so excited to watch you grow. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, I want to ask my favorite question to you. And that's, if you were to have dinner with a historical figure from the past, who would it be? What are you talking about? And what are you eating? Dude, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, uh, it's simple. It's right there. Uh, I think the decisions he made and his vision he had at the time were monumental. And I think when you're not somebody that just follows and goes with the grain, I think that's what to me draws me to people. And I think that's true character and integrity is when you do shit that you feel you shouldn't do because people are going to ostracize you or hate you or want to kill you, then you're, it's worth doing. And I think you're leaving a mark on the world. Our brand, like I said, when, Talking about religion right now is a big no-no. Well, we have faith built into our brand. I don't have to put it in your face. There's no crosses in my background, but just have faith. So I think that would be the person I'd love to have dinner with and just get a feel for that because that's somebody that had the balls to <laughs> to do something monumental and leave a legacy. And I think awesome. that's what we all should all do is leave some kind of legacy. Hell yeah. I'm trying to affect many generations to come. Hopefully you are, man. You are. And <laughs> Everything else is still going to be around. So our platform gets shared continually. That's awesome. Jesse, Dude, what I was you just, Oh, sorry. I was just listening to some of the podcasts that you sent me and I caught up and I'm like, wow, what you are doing is making a massive impact and difference on franchisors like myself and just sharing these stories, make it easy and uh, all the worthwhile for people that are having a hard time sometimes or just need a kick in the butt. So thank, thank you. you. And for those of you that haven't subscribed Subscribe to Local Business Hacks on whatever channel you listen to podcasts or music. You can find us and share it with your friends if they're trying to exponentially grow their business. But going back to your dinner with Abraham Lincoln, what are some questions that you would ask him? And what are you guys going to be eating at this table? Hopefully some steaks. I like me some steaks. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's all grass fed good stuff back then. And if they had a beer, I'd do a beer too. Um, <laughs> you know... Honestly, I'd say what gave you the the gump, the balls to want to make these decisions to whether it's in slavery, whether it's to just run for president to those are crazy things that people decide to do. I don't care who you like or who you support. When you make a decision to do something like that, if you're not just chasing power and you want to have an impact, a lot of your rights and freedoms get taken away quicker than hell. So I think when you become a leader, I think that's how you should think. And I do want, I, I would like to get feedback from a gentleman like him because that makes you, I guess it helps you make decisions that you probably normally wouldn't have done because it's easier to go with the grain versus against the grain because you feel it's right in your heart. So I would, I would ask those questions there and I'd like to hopefully have a steak with him and <laughs> some whiskey or a bourbon or a, or a beer or even some water. I'm cool. That's awesome. It's Abraham that's Lincoln. Cool. Isn't it? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> The next would be Elon Musk because the guy is just hyper crazy and a visionary. So no, modern days, Elon, back in the day, Abraham. That's awesome. Jesse, are you a reader? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an audio listener. I have a hard time reading. That's hence the high school dropout guy. But I do one to two audio books a month. I'm doing Burn the Boats by Matt Higgins right now, and I absolutely love it. Awesome. What are some of your like top books that you would recommend everyone take a listen or read to? Leadership Skills and Navy SEALs is one of my favorite by Jocko Wilkins. I have listened to that twice and I've worked on it a third time and just got off onto another book. The other one was, oh my God, it's, yeah, I know you know the book. I've done it twice. I can't think of it. It's the coach, the gentleman that trained Michael Jordan 
Tim Grover. Tim Grover and his book. His book is incredible. Story really? brand is one traction, but I'm trying to find the one. But it's one of my one of my favorite books, man. Relentless. Relentless. That's the the Tim Grover. Relentless. Incredible book. And then Leadership Skills and Navy SEALs. Awaken the Giant Within was in my first Tony Robbins book. I read about 20 something years ago. But again, I'm on Burn the Boats, which is a Tony Robbins phrase by Matt Higgins. And I absolutely love that. I'm on the seventh chapter right now. Awesome. But I love audiobooks because I can take my notes and it's funny whether it's church or, uh, or again, audiobooks. I take notes and take action pretty quickly if it's something that betters our business. And I'm a bit of a nut job. So that's why I have a team saying, hey, hold the horses, dude. We just made a change <laughs> last week. I know, but this can really help us. But I think you need to be always looking at that because it keeps your um, keeps your passion for your business growing when you're doing something like that. Yeah. And when you're able to free yourself of time to innovate and to invest in whatever way that looks, because so many founders find themselves knee deep in the tranches every single day. Oh, so yeah. Having that time is imperative. Jesse, I'd love to talk about pick anything when we speak on franchising and how you personally can feel out or test that you put potential franchisees through to know if they are a true fit for Outlaw and what you guys are creating. Yeah, you know, we're still really new in this, but I guess you don't have to be new with people. But with franchising, you really need to vet people properly and be aggressive with who you're bringing into your family. And they can't just be a fitness fanatic and be shredded and look incredible. And this woman's shredded and beautiful. This guy's jacked and ripped. That doesn't mean they're going to be a great leader. It doesn't mean they're going to follow processes and procedures. So I think the biggest thing when you're looking and vetting a franchisee is, are they moldable? Are they a sponge? Are they dedicated to following a path that you're going to lay out for them? Or do they want to be their own trailblazer? If so, I, I push them to go do their own thing because they're going to be a headache to you. They're going to be constantly pressing. Well, what about this? Well, no, we did this three years ago. And here's why we don't do this, which that's usually how we answer. We don't just say no. We, we tell people why because we usually tried it 10 years ago. So I would say that they got to be passionate. And they got to have a big, I hate saying a why, because that's kind of an abused term we've been using, which is why, but I think they need to have a passion for something. Is it you want to leave a legacy for your family down the road? Do you like your brand so much that you got tired of your corporate job and now want to have an impact on people? And now I, I'm just looking for the pathway to do it because making sandwiches is cool and pizza is cool. And that's it'll make you money, but I wanted to create something for people to change the lives of people. Like we don't charge extra for spouses or loved ones for personal training. That's how you change the culture dynamic of kids and childhood obesity. Bad decisions are handed down from generation to generation. So if mom and dad are both drinking sodas and gaming out and 80 pounds overweight and diabetic, their kids are going to be the same way. So back in 14, we stopped charging extra, help people, have, leave a legacy. So I think those are the important things to look at is do these people want to have a legacy? Do they want to leave behind something and can they follow processes, procedures? I think if you narrow those things down, you possibly have a really good franchisee. That's awesome. And obviously it's working. Outlaw, Fit Camp, seven locations and growing. Jesse, congrats, man. We're, we're so excited to follow you over here at Referizer all over the world and our listeners globally. And Outlaw, Fit Camp, people get involved. If you're in Texas, go check out Jesse. Jesse, what's the best way for people to get connected with you? Yeah, OFCFranchise.com, OutlawFitCamp.com. I think you follow me on LinkedIn and Facebook, Jesse James Leva, and I'm pretty easy to find. Or you can stop by our Fly Around location. I'd love to meet you. Awesome. <laughs> Call me before you show up, though, because I might be working out. <laughs> That's awesome. Jesse, thank you again, and we hope to see you soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Hey, thanks for honoring me with having me on the show, man. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.